this is my first interview I've ever given and first interview for this new um, endeavor that I'm taking on um, called You, which is basically a digital magazine about self-acceptance and and body positivity and just being a badass bitch, you know? (laughs) Okay, sit down, Julia. Um, no, I I was always the kid who loved magazines when I was growing up. I grew up in Virginia, and I remember when I was in like junior high school, I subscribed to Seventeen magazine, and I would this is so geeky. I would literally run down the block to get home on the days that I thought Seventeen was going to be in my mailbox because like I lived in a small town, and I felt like I I never felt like I fully belonged there. I mean, I had a like I had a happy enough childhood growing up. But I was like the only Jewish kid I knew, the only kid with divorced parents that I knew, like the only kid who, you know, lived with a single mom. And and I remember that that magazine in particular was like a window into another world with like people who were just, you know, more and different than what I was experiencing in my town. So, you know, you, you obviously ran one of the biggest magazines for women, like How do you think the dialogue around, you know, women's bodies and, 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 and body acceptance has changed in, in 2021? Yeah. I mean, I think it's, it has changed, evolved, gotten so, so much better. And at the same time, there's still like a huge, obviously distance to go for a million reasons. I mean, I think the main thing that has made it better is that like, because the media world is so flat now and anybody can, you know, anybody can talk to anybody else at any time. You don't have to wait for a magazine to say that like your voice is good enough or something like that. Um, You know, which honestly is like never how I felt like I was operating as an editor, but still was like the truth. You couldn't really be published until somebody said you were, you were good enough. And so obviously with the advent of social media, everybody has a a voice and it became much, much easier for women to, and everybody push back on what they perceived as like, you know, rigid ideals or conformist, you know, ideas of how people should live. And I think that, you know, even, even though like as an editor, I always felt like I hoped that glamour was along the end of the scale that you know was more democratic more inclusive we were never trying to be that kind of magazine where you're like pressing your face to the glass to see how other people <laughs> live it was like supposed to be you know supposed to be about you i mean i mean talking about social media do you think that social media kind of creates this unrealistic perception for young women yes <laughs> <laughs> definitely. I do too. Like I definitely. Do. Yes. I, I mean, I think it's a bunch of different things. Like, you know, it's good that it's a megaphone and it's a good that it's a place where people can push back. It also is a place where you are constantly being looked at. And it it is a place where I think many people, not just women, but many people are often made to feel that they are objects rather than subjects. And, you know, there have been tons of studies that, you know, have been done on the actual impact of just hours spent on social media on your phone in terms of how you feel about your own body, your own self, your ability to, you know, believe that your body can do capable things as opposed to look a certain way. I think it's going to take us all, you know, learning to just like, you know, put this down for a long time in order to, in order to really like live this thing that we know we should be living. Yeah. I, I, for me, it was, it was the same. I had to, there was a day where I, I had logged, like, I don't even know, 10 hours on Instagram. And I was like, wow, that's really unhealthy. And I, I remember being entirely depressed because obviously, you know, social media, you're, you're depicting the best parts of your life. You're not seeing the struggles of, of people and the struggles that people have with their insecurities. And Mm -hmm. you're like, oh, like, am I not doing enough? Am I not this enough? And, and it can really, you know, I was reading that like depression in young women is, is like at an all time high Mm -hmm. right now because Mm -hmm. of social media and because, you know, the girl that, you know, grows up in a small town in Iowa you know, mm-hmm. sees this very grandiose depiction of, you know, what life is supposed to be like. And mm-hmm. 
you know, it's just, it's tough. It's tough to like, to see that in young women. Yeah. Well, I mean, I love, you know, I love how you're using your platform to try to like push back at that a bit. I mean, both the fact that you're like handing the, the microphone to a lot of other people, which is a great thing that most people don't do with their, you know, with their platforms. And, and also that you're just like pushing back on this kind of idea of perfection, which is so bogus. Thank yeah, thank you. I, it, this, this really all started with me <laughs> growing up my body hair. And, uh -huh. um, which by the way, why is that even such a shocking thing? Do you understand <laughs> how many interview, like uh, every interview after that was about my body hair. And I'm like, why is that such a, <laughs> such a problem? And, and posting about it and seeing even women be like, that's unhygienic, that's unsanitary. And I'm like, <laughs> what? Are you saying this? <laughs> like, it? it literally grows on your body. Like it is like, the most is natural there? thing in the world. <laughs> it, was, it, was, it, was, it was truly baffling to me. Um, it's just even like the internal, the internalized misogyny in people, yeah. like how deep rooted it is. Um, right. So like, and also if you know, you're go. No, I was just going to say, like, if you, it gets super disturbing when you actually like walk back that resistance to body hair and try to figure out where it comes from, because it's actually about making women into children, right? Like right. the hair right. is something that marks you as a fully grown adult yeah. woman. Why would you want to deny that? Anyway, sorry, go on. Wow. Wow. You're so right. You know, I, I'm curious, like, how how do you think we can like start allowing women to feel good about themselves and not create these unrealistic unreal beauty standards? Mm. I mean, I think unfortunately it's not an overnight thing because I think so much of it goes back also to like how you are raised and how you're valued by the people that you're closest to when you're young, you know? And I think that it's, it's really hard if you grow up being valued for how you present to the world to roll that back. Um, I fully totally agree. I also think about, you know, like growing up, obviously I had a lot of insecurities. You know, I don't have perfect teeth. I don't have, you know, I'm fully covered in tattoos. Um, you know, like, and I, I sometimes wish that I had you know, I didn't grow, I grew up homeschooled. I didn't have a lot of friends. And I wish that the people that I looked up to, you know, mm -hmm. like artists and, and, and musicians and, and stuff like that were more um, talked about this more. And I think mm -hmm. maybe if, if the people that, that I was influenced by talked about it more, I would have grown up more confident. And like you said, I've heard you talk before, and I think this is so important too, like that thing of not talking to yourself um, in a worse way than you would talk to your, to a friend. Like think about like how you speak to someone that you love most and like, why do we talk to our bodies? You know, it, like you wouldn't be friends with anybody that talks to you the way you talk to your body so um I don't know I just love I, I think that's a really good observation that you've made yeah I actually came to that to that observation very um very recently I had shot a music video for a song of mine called little did I know and the course is like little did I know you would be the one I I confide in learn how to try with and like you know little did I know it'd be you that I decided and and I when I did the music video, I had to sing that song to myself in the mirror. And I don't mm. think I had ever looked at myself and, and sang words like that, or like even said words like that, where I had to mm. stare at myself. And it was, um, it was just, I was crying and it was just like, oh, I really am so hard on myself. Um, and, and it was just, it was very eye opening for me that day that I do. Wow. That. That's really beautiful. And that, uh, that also makes me think that's like an exercise that everybody should do. Like, let's all go home tonight and sing that, actually that song yes. to ourselves. <laughs> Cindy, Levy, you are so amazing. One last thing, because I just, I just, you're so incredible. I really want you to- <laughs> Back at you. Tell, um, I really want you to tell um, all my wonderful fans about your book as well. 
please. Oh, the Together We Rise? Wait, I might even have. Okay, so this is my, this is my last book. Um, I, if you're asking about the book, I'm still writing, still writing it, got to come back for that one. Um, okay, this is a book that I um, co-produced with a group of women, primarily women who had organized the 2017 Women's March that you were just talking about. And it's stories of the people who did the organizing, stories of people who were there, stories of people who were just everyday folks who went, stories of some women who decided not to go and why they decided not to go and how they, you know, how they feel now. And I think it's just a really, um, even three years later, I'm still so proud of it. I think it's a, a really beautiful, uh, beautiful work. So together we rise, you can get it wherever books are sold. <laughs> and are, when is your new book going to come? Uh, whenever I finish writing. <laughs> yeah. So, so it, it, you're going to have to give me a minute. But, All right. Um, okay. I'll tell everyone to look for it. Everyone that's watching, go get her book. She's phenomenal. She's such a badass. Um, oh, and my thank last you, Julia. question is, you know, I'm, I'm calling this magazine you. And, yes. You know, I, I want you to tell people, you know, who are you? Like when you think about yourself, who are you? Creative. Yes. Independent. Yes. To a fault. That's <laughs> the, yeah. Like that's a good and a that's a good and a bad thing. Um, and I, I loving. I think I'm like. I think. I think I'm. I hope I'm good at like showing up for the people in my life. I'll give you a fourth. Badass. You <laughs> are so wonderful. Thank you so much for making this um, so effortlessly comfortable. Um, oh, you're so I, good at this. I can't wait to see all your interviews. And thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. Thank you for asking me, Julia. It was so nice to meet you. Of course, you too. Bye. Cindy.